The new Sony 7200 G2 versions are now both available, the f4 and the f2.8, but which of these lenses is the better buy for you? I had no idea, so I rented both of these from B&H. I've used them for about two weeks at work and I have a lot of opinions about these lenses. Based on the initial specs before I got these lenses in hand, I thought I was going to like one of these a lot more than the other. However, after using these side by side and swapping them out, there's a lot of little differences between these lenses that after you're using it all day, it really does make a difference. In this video, let's go over if you should get the F4 or the F2.8 G2. Hey there, I'm Keith, a designer and videographer from Cleveland, Ohio. And if you like either of those things, feel free to subscribe to find your way back in the future. When it comes to price and specs, here is a table comparing each of the lenses. I'll go over the specs and what I think is important, and I'll tell you what I think at the end. The first thing to go over here is price. Since that's probably what you saw when you were comparing these two lenses online, these lenses have a dramatic price difference. The f2.8 G2 is $2,800, while the f4 is $1,700. The size and build quality are one of the next things you will notice with these lenses. Sitting these lenses side by side, the size difference is almost as great as the price difference. The f2.8 is eight inches long, while the f4 is six inches. The f2.8's filter size is 77 millimeters, while the f4's is 72. The weight difference is pretty noticeable as well. The f2.8 weighs 2.3 pounds, while the f4 weighs 1.7. The size and weight of these lenses also comes down to how they zoom. The f2.8 has an internally zooming lens, while the f4 zooms by extending the barrel. This means the f4 can be smaller overall, and you can actually fit this in a bag a lot easier than the 2.8, just because of that size difference. Without the lens hoods, you can see the difference a little more. Even just in the hoods, this is the f 2.8's hood, and this is the f4 hood. It's a pretty noticeable size difference going from 77 millimeters to 72, and when you're putting it in your bag, if you flip this over and put it on the front of your lens like this, these little differences compound into big differences once you add them all up. The f2.8 has an aperture dial. When I was at work, this was one of the big differences. I constantly found myself going for the aperture ring that doesn't exist on the f4. If you don't use the aperture ring, this isn't as big of a deal, but um, I didn't realize how much I actually relied on aperture rings until I was swapping between these two lenses. Autofocus on both of these lenses is also extremely fast. I was very surprised to see Sony put four XD linear motors in the f4 because it's only a G lens, while the 2.8 has four XD linear motors, and this is the G master lens. The autofocus is very fast and reliable. The targets are sticky if you adjust your autofocus settings. You can get very good results out of each of these lenses. If I'm being picky here, the f2.8 was easier to manual focus because this ring is just larger in diameter and the rubber piece is larger here. So I was manual focusing some things and I did find myself preferring the 2.8. Um, that being said, this might just come down to this being a larger lens, so it's easier to work with. If size is your number one priority, you can definitely learn to work with this ring. It's just a little bit more difficult, and it takes a little bit more finesse to use. When it comes to flaring with both of these lenses, they're both very well controlled thanks to the newer coatings on the Sony lenses. However, when there is a small light source, both of these lenses have a flare when the light source is slightly off camera then fades when it goes out of frame. When it comes to flaring, I think the 2.8 wins here, but it should given that it's almost twice the price of the F4. For sharpness and image quality, both of these lenses are very sharp considering they're zoom lenses. Both of these lenses are sharp in the center, but when comparing the outer edges, the 2.8 seems to have the advantage here. The 2.8 also seems to control chromatic aberration slightly better than the F4, I had to zoom in to 200% before I saw a clear difference though. The F4 is still very usable in my opinion, but the 2.8 has the slight advantage here. I was shooting hang gliders in Cleveland one day and I noticed that the 2.8 had slightly sharper results than the F4. The F4 is still very usable in my opinion. However, when I was handheld following all of those hang gliders, I think the image quality of the 2.8 once you zoomed in was better. Uh, that being said, this lens is physically larger and it does cost more, it has more coating, so it's no surprise that the image quality is slightly better, but 
Is it $1,200 better? Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. The minimum focusing distance for both of these lenses is usable in my opinion. The 2.8 is coming in at 15.7 inches, but the F4 is technically a macro lens, so it is the clear winner here, coming in at 10.2 inches. To better illustrate this difference, here is the f2.8 at f4 at 15 inches away, and here is the f4. I can find this being very helpful for wedding videographers especially because wedding videography is insanely crazy. You're going from shooting something close up to far away, and this lens can do that. It's going to be a great benefit if you don't want to be swapping your lenses all day, going from macro to far away shots. For image stabilization, both of these lenses have three different modes of image stabilization. The first one is for standard, the second is for panning, and the third is for moving subjects. Using the correct mode will greatly help you here. When I was uh, shooting those hang gliders, I was using mode three on both lenses, and they were both keeping up very well. If you're traveling and want the lightest kit, the F4 is the clear winner here. However, if sharpness and autofocus are your top priority, the f2.8 is a fantastic lens. Another way to look at this is if you have demanding clients that want the best image quality, then the f2.8 is worth the extra investment because you can charge those clients to make up the price differences between these two lenses. If you have a dedicated macro, this is a great complement to the 90mm macro because this is a sharp zoom lens and the 90 millimeter macro is the sharpest macro lens I've ever used. So pairing these two together is exponentially more expensive. However, you will get the sharpest results out of this combination. However, if you're on a budget, the F4 version is almost too good to pass up. It is still a 70 to 200. It has four XD linear motors it is a macro lens on top of it, and honestly, I think the F4 version is a slam dunk if you're on a budget. And if you're not sure, I would say start with the more affordable version, and if you get these and you just don't like some of the features on them, you can always sell it or return it and then buy the 2.8. The 2.8 is one of the most expensive Sony lenses before you get into like the 400 millimeter primes and all that, but. Um, for us everyday people, the f2.8 is one of the most expensive lenses that I'll probably ever own in the Sony E-mount. So coming from that to the f4, it is really hard to make a decision between these two. So it really comes down to how you shoot and if you're shooting for clients or if you're shooting for yourself or social media content and you don't wanna break the bank, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the 70 to 200 F4. And most modern Sony cameras have dual ISOs these days, so you're losing a stop of light going from 2.8 to F4. However, you can go to the second base ISO on most of these cameras, and that really isn't as big of a difference anymore. One thing that these cameras can't make up for though is the difference between f2.8 and f4 when it comes to that bokeh. If you find yourself shooting a lot of portraits and maybe you're not a fan of uh, prime lenses, but you want a telephoto lens for portraits, I would say maybe check out the f2.8 version. It is very expensive. However, the f4 may not give you that background bokeh that you're looking for when it comes to shooting portraits. When looking at the specs, the one I thought I was going to fall in love with was the F4. On paper, they both have four XD linear motors. They both have the three modes of stabilization. They're both 70 to 200s, but I didn't really take into consideration that aperture ring that I like to use with my FX6. But also, I love how easy the zoom ring is and all of the internal zooming that's happening on the f2.8. Honestly, I didn't really think this was going to make much of a difference, but the ease of use of spinning the focus or the uh, zoom ring on the 70 to 200 2.8 is a lot easier if you're zooming around a lot than using this extending barrel of the f4. It was easier to zoom with the 2.8 and it was a little less conspicuous than the barrel of the lens like zooming in and out when I was zooming around. So um, again, this is completely based on what you'll be using these lenses for. Um, this was my use case, so I thought it would be worth mentioning. 
For me, I'm going with the f2.8 and sending back the f4. This doesn't mean it's the right decision for everyone though. Uh, what do you guys think of these lenses? Which one of these would you keep if you had both of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.